Howdy, it's Tubal Kane, and I need a new flywheel for my Xbox. Just kidding. So, over the course of my career making stuff, I often try to cut corners financially where possible. Cheap? Maybe. That's fine. Cost limited, we'll say. Anyways, I've always wondered if you could use one of those, like, exercise weights as sort of a cheap cast iron casting to make a flywheel. Uh, I don't have any access to any kind of furnace or casting setup. Anyways, I thought I would try machining a, uh, a fitness weight into a flywheel. So, definitely I'm going to have to make sure it's running true to be safe. I'm not sure what the quality of the cast iron is going to be like. But, it's something I've always wanted to try, and I have a project running a flywheel, so I thought I'd try it. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a cap with a center hole in it. Um, the center hole is going to be for receiving a live center, and that'll actually push the weight onto the chuck. Um, if you think about how the thing was probably cast, it's got draft angles on it, which makes it really hard to grip. So something like this is really necessary. Safety is going to be something that's really important to keep in mind for something like this, or any kind of quasi-experiment, I guess. Um, I'm going to limit the speed, I'm going to make sure it's seated nice and solidly, and of course the end cap is going to hold it in place if anything happens. When I'm locating something on a chuck like this, I'm trying to make sure it's attached nice and solid, I listen for a really dull thud from the hammer. The other thing I actually forgot to do here is to cover the ways with the cloth or something. Uh, you should always do that when you're machining cast iron. This end cap isn't locating it in the center or anything fancy like that. It's literally just um, applying pressure backwards into the chuck, uh, and that'll stop it from slipping off. It goes without saying, I never use brand new inserts for soluble projects like this. You can really see how out of round the material is as I'm cutting it. Um, I have to take like, I think an eighth of an inch off or something before I even start getting a continuous cut. And that really underlines the need to machine it rather than just using it sort of as the raw casting before you buy it. Just like how the OD was out of round, the front was kind of wonky too, so it took a while to get some material off and a nice continuous cut. I found that using the back angle of the insert actually left the best surface finish, and I think that's because it left the, uh, the massive little cast iron chips leave the cutting area and not get dragged into the face of the workpiece. Because I was gripping the outside of the part this time, I felt a little more comfortable turning the speed up to make a 250 or 300 RPM, uh, just so I can sort of get through the boring a little faster. Alright, so, how did that turn out? Well, I mean, not amazingly. Um, obviously the bore was far too big for what I needed, so I had to make a little sleeve. And you can see that's just uh, going to be fastened in with fasteners here. I only had one of the right size. Um, got a set screw to hold it in. Now, flywheel by definition is a large varying load, so set screw is definitely not ideal. I might uh, pin it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not nice material to work with. Now, I'm reliably informed that good cast iron is fine to work with, but uh, you can see here this is not good cast iron. 
So that's basically a deal breaker. Uh, if it's going to have voids in it, it's not going to be safe. When it's spinning, it'll have huge, uh, they're called hoop stresses in the outer periphery. And, you know, voids like that will cause it to come apart. Uh, you'll probably also have seen in the machining footage, it started tearing out at the edges. Uh, I think that was probably my insert getting dull, but it certainly dropped my confidence sufficiently that I stopped machining it. I was actually going to originally go in and get these fives out of here and maybe put a, a tabletop machine shop logo or something in there. I didn't end up doing that. Uh, there's all kinds of, they're like nodules or something in here. And uh, yeah, it uh, it's, wreaks havoc on your tools. So I guess to answer the original question, can you make a flywheel out of a weight for lifting? I'm going to say soft no. So it's not safe. It wasn't pleasant to do. The amount of money I'd have to spend on a piece of steel this big would be, uh, you know, 15 bucks maybe. So I think I'm going to end up going back and getting that piece of steel. But I'm sort of glad I did this. I'm glad I know for future so I'm not tempted. It would have been really cool if it worked out though because uh, if you're making something really big like a power hammer or something I don't know um, those big 25 kilogram weight plates might have been uh, might have been perfect for that but yeah the material is just uh, it pretty pretty crappy so I wouldn't recommend trying it that being said I am gonna use it a little bit on the machine I'm working on now uh, just until the new steel gets here I'm not gonna show you the full project here yet because it's hilarious and I want to sort of do it justice but you can see the flywheel portion at least works quite well um, you don't know what's going on back here, but there is sort of a, an oscillating load, so the flywheel really stabilizes that.